Alright, picture this. It's Sunday morning and you want something warm and comforting and new to have for breakfast. You go to your cupboard, but all there is is that sad little sachet of oatmeal and a piece of razor bread. Ew. So you grab your car keys to go to McDonald's and get yourself a sausage and egg muffin with a coffee. But wait, I'm outside your door. I pimp slap you across the face and say, don't worry. I'm here to help. What's up everybody, my name is Hofstadter and today we're going to be taking a look at scrambled eggs. I want to introduce you guys to a couple of core concepts of Indian cooking, spice toasting and making the initial taka. Now the great thing about this dish is that it's really easy, it's really quick and it gives you guys the room to experiment with whatever spices that you got at your Indian market. Oh, oh, we're going to be doing a spice tea. It's quite delicious. So I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. All right, to make the tea, this will serve about two people. We have some basic spices here. I have four pods of cardamom bashed open, three cloves, um, about an inch of ginger, probably you could probably go with a little less, and some cassia bark. The cassia bark adds a little bit of sweetness. It's optional, but what's essential is the cardamom, the cloves, and the ginger. So we're just gonna chuck these in our pots. We're going to add two mugs of water. One, two. We're going to bring this up over to the boil. All right, two minutes had passed and I added my tea bags. I forgot to hit record when that happened. So this is gonna go for a couple of minutes. And at this point, I'm going to add the sugar. You can add however much you want. I'm going to add two teaspoons for two people. Um, normally I don't add sugar, but there you go. I'm feeling in the mood for something sweet this morning. So this is gonna go for a couple of minutes. As a note, you can adjust the spices to whatever ratio you like, you like depending on your preference. Alright, so I think that's long enough for the tea to have boiled. So now I'm going to add my milk. Um, add however much you want, I think. Yep, that looks like a good colour. I prefer mine a little bit dark. You want to taste it, see how it goes for you. That is quite nice. But it does need to be a little bit stronger, so we're going to reduce it for a bit and just increase the flavors. So I'll put the heat on a low and while that's bubbling away I'm gonna have a look at our eggs. All right so this recipe again is for two pieces. One onion, one tomato, some curry leaves. These are dead. Um, they won't provide much flavor but I'm adding them because I want to show you how they are used. A couple of green chilies. You can get rid of these if you want but they do add a really good flavor. Red chili powder, entirely optional. Some turmeric for color. Some cumin seeds for the earthy flavor. And some aspartita. Ginger, we'll be using about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of this. It gives a really nice peppery heat, which I think goes well. And of course, two eggs. All right, first off, let's finally chop our onion. Let's finally chop our tomato. Do a fine mince of our green chilies. Alright, not particularly fine mints, but it'll do. I forgot to open up the bowl of asafoetida. Who made this packaging? It's the worst. I don't freaking... <coughs> Alright, now I want to show you guys how to toast your spices. Now, we're just... We do this to unlock the flavor a bit. And it's very, very important not to burn them. So we're just gonna heat up that pan. Three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin seeds will do us. So we're just gonna let that do its thing. And you wanna constantly stir them too. Now as you toast your spices, the aroma will slowly unlock from them and it'll start to smell really good. At that stage, your spices should have turned a slightly darker color and it's at this point that you want to take your pan off the heat and transfer them into your mortar and pestle to allow them to cool. I don't know why we allow them to cool. I think it helps the oils get back into their natural position, like, you know, resting meats. So you want to keep an eye on these and make sure they don't burn because they go from toasty and magnificent to bitter and deadly in almost no time at all. It's been about two minutes, we're 
close, we're slowly getting there. I think about one minute more will do the trick because we are adding these to a hot pan. You also have to consider how long your spices are going to be cooked for when they're added to your dish. So we sort of want to get them to like 90% of the way because these are going to be added very close to the end. Enough, yeah, I can smell them. That is good. I'm happy with that. All right, take a close look at the spices on my hand. The lower one is the toasted one and the one on top is untoasted. As you can see, this is a slightly um, darker shade of brown. Um, the top is almost greenish. This is a really good coloration and that is generally what you want to aim for. All right, so let's get our cumin seeds and we're going to give them a real nice and fine grind. Something like this will do. All right, so now we're going to do something that you have to learn to do well, and this is the spiced oil. For this dish, you can use ghee or vegetable oil, whatever it works. I just made some fresh ghee, but I'm not going to use that because I want to save it for some dal. And for this, we're going to add about, I think, a tablespoon of oil. You want to keep in mind how much oil you use for your spices. If you have a lot of spices that are going in, you want to use a decent amount of oil so we can fry them properly. But for this, for the amount of curry leaves I have, this should do fine. Now, as I said before, these curry leaves are basically dead, but I do want to show you how they're going to react in the pan. To do this, you basically have to throw in your spices at a significant temperature. You know this, you know it's ready when seeds dance and sputter in the oil with air bubbles popping up. So, if you're unused to it, you can chuck in just a couple of cumin seeds and see how they react. The oil is not hot enough, they are not reacting at all. And the great thing about cumin seeds is that, you know, one or two of them is not going to flavor the oil, so you can just chuck in however much you want. Alright, let's check out the oil. And there we go, they are spattering very nicely. Now, when it comes to what spices you want to do, the big ones go in first and you want to go down by size. So first off, you're going to add a few dashes of asafoetida, not a lot, and that's going to sizzle up quite nicely. Next, we're going to add in our curry leaves, and these sputter like mad, be careful. Woo! There we go. That is aroma. And then your chopped onions. And this will drop the temperature of the pan very quickly. Now, let's talk about why I added asafoetida and curry leaves. They both give a different flavor. Um, of course, curry leaves give a muskiness, uh, it's almost lemony, it's quite hard to describe, and the hing gives a mouthfeel. It's similar to butter and onions and garlic. So if you're not doing any of those, just add some hing and it should give the approximate mouthfeel. For a dish like this, we just want to sweat the onions till they get nice and soft. So this is all right, I might get be, be a bit loud, so bear with me. I'm happy with the color of these onions. They're just a little bit tinged with brown, so that is nice. This is going to be very spicy, extremely. It's going to be spectacular. Don't blow your head off. And just fry this for about just a couple minutes or so. And now at this point, we, you want to add in your uh, drier spices. So we're going to add just a touch of turmeric powder for color um, the smallest amount of red chili powder because this is going to be spicy and our cumin seed powder half a teaspoon and you want to cook this when you add in your spices you want to cook them quite well just about a minute is enough for the get to get the raw flavor out and now I'm going to add in my ginger which I've given a very, very, very rough bash. Just want to saute it until the raw smell of it goes away. All right, now add in your tomatoes. You want to fry this until most of the moisture is evaporated. Oh, I forgot, you should probably add some salt at this point just for seasoning. Not a lot because we've also seasoned the two beaten eggs. We're going to add our eggs and just mix them around into your tomato and onion mixture. We're nearly done. You won't probably want to use a non-stick pan for this. I prefer my eggs a little bit on the drier side. Alright, so I'm happy with that. 
now and we are just going to pile this up on some warm toast. Strain your tea, pile your eggs on some buttered toast and serve some fresh fruit on the side with maybe some chaat masala and you're done. Right, so let's have a taste test of our underbergie. Mm. Acidity from the tomatoes, that slight lemoniness from the curry leaves, butteriness from the asafoetida, and of course the cumin seeds, which give a lovely dark earthiness to it. It's absolutely delicious, I love this breakfast, and of course it is spicy. But with those chilies, it's actually not too bad, I thought it would be a lot worse. Let's try our tea. It's like a hug, a really warm, comforting hug. Now with this you can just um, remove the cassia if you want, increase the cloves, increase the caramel, increase the ginger, do whatever you want, want with it. Experiment. There's a really easily available spice, it's quite cheap. Some people prefer it without the cassia, I do, because I just, sometimes I don't add, add sugar, sometimes I do, but I said I was in the mood for something sweet. Mm. We can't forget our fruit with a little bit of the chopped masala on it. I don't know how, but chopped masala tastes even eggier than the eggs. Oh, I do know how. It's a black salt on that. Now, <clears throat> now, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. And let me know what you did to your eggs in the comments below if you do make this dish. Because there is a lot of room to maneuver. And it's a really good dish to really flex your muscles in the kitchen when it comes to spices. 